Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live, almost daily show on YouTube on all things camera, photo, video, live streaming related. We are, uh, we've now moved the show to Monday, Wednesday, Friday instead of a daily show. It used to be daily, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, week, daily. Let's not get hung up on details here. Uh, but now it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday show, allowing me more time to, well, A, come up with halfway decent topics instead of making crap up every day, and uh, to work on edited videos like the one that I released on Saturday, which if you haven't seen yet, please do check that out. We'll link to that above as well, but that would be the photo moment edited video on wireless labs, and we were doing a range test specifically on wireless labs, comparing the tried and true Sennheiser uh, EW100, which is a just awesome microphone, to the much much lower cost KNF Concept UHF mic at only $150, and then also to the Samson Go Mic Mobile Pro or Go Mic Mobile, yeah, not Pro Go Mic Mobile, which is $250 and is a digital microphone. So. Lots of things to compare in there, and it was a fun little test. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't watched it yet, please do check that out. We will link to that right there. Okay, so there's that. Uh, this is an AMA show, meaning you ask me whatever you like, and we're just going to talk through it. So um, get your questions on the ready. Type at Photo Joseph in front of the questions, like all these fine people here have, and at Photo Joseph gets my attention. That way I can see your question. If you're in a hurry or just want to support the show, down here there's a sweet little dollar sign. If you click on that, it is a, it's called a super chat, and then your question gets like really big and bold on my screen, and you'll figure out what to do from there. So let me scroll up to the top. Bart, I don't know if you actually had a question here if you were just talking. Um, you do. Okay, so let's let's just start with Bart's question, and we're gonna we're just gonna we're gonna go. Ah, Bart says on the GH5 firmware version two, I'm having issues with monitor LUTs with Vlog. When using a LUT on an LCD monitor and then switching to playback and then back to recording mode, the LUT is no longer applied. Um, okay, I don't. This is one of those things where I have to try to remember the email that I read. Um, I'll, I'm going to say this because I don't know what I'm supposed to or allowed to say. I didn't read the email that closely. Uh, please stand by. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. And and that's all. That's Bart's question. Okay, good. So just please stand by. Marvin, he's got no no questions there. But good morning, Marvin. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Zachary. I see Zachary. I see Martin. I see Sean. Marvin's got a question. Oh no, he doesn't. He just says good weekend. The Hamilton won the Japan GP. Oh, the Grand Prix. Excellent. Very well done. Everybody's saying, hey, hey, people got their popcorn ready, too much starch in the wash, causing the fabric noise. Probably. That's what Ryan said. You guys are making fun of me. I don't starch my clothes. Ooh, but on the topic of clothing, not a new shirt, a shirt I haven't been able to wear for a while. <laughs> Happy about that. Okay. Uh, PSA, meh.com, M-E-H, has the DJI Spark for $399. Ooh, they swear it isn't stolen. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, normally it's $4.99 for the Spark, so $100 off. That is a very good deal. Uh, I wonder if that means that something new is starting to come, or maybe they've just kind of got overstock now. People have bought out what they want. Kevin says, the one question that must surely be on everyone's mind, when are you going to cover autofocus under firmware 2? I don't know. Do I have to? I played with it. Um, there's a lot of people doing videos on it. It is definitely better than, than firmware version 1 was. It's you know, still not going to beat out Canon and Sony, but it's better, and we're happy about that. You know, any improvement is a happy improvement. It is, uh, you know, autofocus, unfortunately, isn't the strongest point for video, for video. Autofocus is still not the strongest point for the GH5, but it does things that only an Aria Alexa can do. So, you know, we're okay with that. Uh, I know, I wish the autofocus was better as well, believe me. I do, but it is what it is. And let's see where else we're scrolling, scrolling. Here we go. XT500C says, it looks like you're wearing your lav mic facing down. Is that to prevent pops? Yes, that is precisely what it's for. I found... When, because I do this a lot, I look down, I look around, and so on, the levels would change more dramatically when I did this, um, but also, yes, it was primarily the pops, and which is interesting because I'm not, the mic's not here. Usually you get pop, it's like right here, right? When I use, when I use this microphone, right, this has a pop filter because it's designed for you to talk like this, and without it, then you definitely get pops, and this helps to reduce that significantly. However, uh, I was still getting them on the lav mic, so I flipped it upside down, one of those little tricks I saw or read somewhere, I don't know, and it seemed to work. And so we lose a little bit of levels, we're bringing the gain up a little bit, but I think it's okay, and I think it sounds better overall. I would say the sound quality is ever so slightly better when it's vertical, but the pops are annoying. So we do this, and then we try and EQ the difference. Which, by the way, tell me how you think of the sound quality. Um, I asked Ryan to adjust the EQ a little bit, I thought it was a little bit too bassy, so I want to see what you guys think of it today. All right, let's see. Let's go back to the comments. 
scrolling down. And Marvin says, best way of getting a remote control for setting manual focus for a night time lapse. You mean you want to focus rack during a nighttime time lapse? Is that what you mean? Uh, I would say, depending on how long the time lapse is, because you can do, well, probably, yeah, I'm sure that's not slow enough. You can do the focus, what is it, not focus pulling, what is it called? Focus point setting, I forget what the feature is called, on the GH5, if you're using a GH5, are you using a GH5? You are, I think you've got a GH5, right? Where you can have it do uh, focus rack. It's not called focus rack, though, what is it called? On uh, on the GH5, but for video, oh, that's a video feature, let's look in the right place. And, which is super, super cool, but it's probably too slow for what you want to do. I'm too fast, rather, for what you want to do. Um, what is that called? Sound output, HTML, color bars, record. No, where is it? Continuous? I don't even remember where it is. Anyway, there's an ability in the GH5 to shift focus. Oh, I have to be in video mode. That's why. There we go. To uh, move focus from point A to focus transition. That's what it's called. Focus transition from point A to B or A to B to C, and you can set the speed of that. But the slowest speed is probably too fast for what you're talking about. So if I was going to try and do an accurate focus rack during a long time lapse, I think you would require totally external hardware. One of those rigs, that, and I don't have any manufacturer to recommend to you, I'm sorry, but one of those rigs that basically wraps around the lens and then you would do a, a you know, a, it's for focus pulling, so you have more control over the focus. And then that would have to be motorized, programmable motorized. It sounds like the kind of thing that Edelkron would make. Look up Edelkron, see what they've got going on. They might have something for that, because they make all kinds of crazy weird stuff for things like that. It's usually expensive, but top quality. Uh, that's all I got for you, though. Sorry. Brent Kaplan says, DGI has a new product announcement on October 11th. Ooh, how exciting. I, their, their stuff is so cool. I, I am... Now that I'm flying that little spark, I'm so into the drone. It is awesome. Oh, I got a great spark story for you. So a buddy of mine, who you have met, uh, Chris Briscoe, he was on, he's been on the show before. We sat outside of his studio talking drones and other fun, mostly drones, um, quite a few months ago. <laughs> he was flying. He tells me this story. I hope I'm, it's okay that I share this story, Chris. He was flying his drone over water, and a series of unfortunate events led to a crash landing in the water. He couldn't see it when it hit the water, but he immediately went, ah, pulled up, and tried to fly it back to him. And apparently it was flying, kind of doing this the whole way home. It got to him, and he landed it, and it slammed down. All this water came off of it. Uh-oh. He finds out later from someone who was on a boat that was nearby that was able to see the thing happen that it completely submerged and then rose out of the water. It's like the little viathan of drones came up out of the water and hobbled its way home. And he said it took a few weeks of drying it out, but it flies again. How cool is that? That's the Mavic. He's got the Mavic. I think that is fantastic. Um, and good job not killing that one, Chris. That would have been the second one you destroyed. <laughs> hey, this is what we do. We fly these things, you gotta kill them eventually. Okay, uh, let's see what else is going on in here. I'm excited for the DJI announcement. I did not know that. So that's something we should be able to cover in the next podcast on Wednesday. Wait, what's today's date? 9th, 10th? That'll be, uh, that'll be Wednesday morning, the day of. Darn, I won't have, uh, I won't have time. Oh, well, anyway, it'll be the next one. Uh, SkateTube, can Panasonic update the GX8 to make stabilization work on video too? As far as I know, it only works on photo. This sounds like a question that came up before, and I said put it in a comment, and you may have, and then I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, doesn't it work on video? I was pretty sure it worked on video. All right, Ryan, uh, grab the GX8, please, in the drawer of cameras and make sure that it's got a battery. If not, there's a few batteries sitting next to it where the stack of batteries are and see if you can find one that works. We'll, we'll try that. We'll come back to it and see. I thought it worked on video, but I don't. I haven't shot a whole lot of video with the GX8. Handspeeder Hand Troop says, do you have any experience with the GH5 firmware version 2 and the Ninja Inferno? Um, nothing more than plugging it in and seeing that it actually, the signal still transfers, but I haven't uh, done any shooting with it. And the only reason I did that was because over the weekend, I did a talk at SOU at our local university to this kind of camera club thing that was happening about mirrorless, and I showed that off as a capability of doing external recording. So I plugged in the Inferno, I fired it up, um, I, but I didn't do much more than that just to show that it's a capability. So no, sorry, I haven't. Are you having any issues with it? Uh, that would be the question. If you're not having any issues with it, then I've used it quite a bit with version one firmware, and it's you know such an awesome thing to have. 
Okay, Sonic Palette. I'm still experiencing dimming with my GH5. Aha, okay, good. This is something that I said to bring back up, and I don't know if it was to you or not, but to bring back up after the version two firmware update came. So Sonic Palette is experiencing dimming with the GH5. Everything is off on economy mode. Monitor luminescence is at two. I'm assuming you're, you have upgraded to version two firmware, right, Sonic? Please confirm that. If you have, then I will investigate further. If you haven't, then update to version two and get back to me. Uh, let me know, I'll, I'll get to your follow-up comment later. Marvin says, no need to uh, focus on one bright star. No, okay, sorry, Marvin is now clarifying what he meant. Just need to focus on one bright star before setting the time lapse off. Got him. Um, Ryan put the wrong battery in the GX8 and it sounds like he can't get it out now, so he's gonna be a minute. We'll have this camera eventually. Um, all right, uh, so just so Marvin just needs to focus on one bright star before setting the time. Okay, so you're having a hard time focusing. I don't know if focus, I've never, I don't really do night star photography, but you need to focus on the star. It's definitely not setting the camera to infinity. Uh, lenses at infinity are usually beyond the final focal point. It's, I think, my understanding of that, just in case you're wondering, is to allow for fluctuations in the lens due to heat or humidity, where things change a little bit, you wouldn't want to be able to not get to affinity, so they set it up so you can focus a little bit past infinity. I, th I think that's why that, that happens, and this is all lenses. Um, so you're having a hard time focusing. Manual focus, of course, enable focus peaking, that always helps, and push in, remember you've got the ability to zoom in on focus so that you can you can zoom way in on manual focus and hopefully get closer to that star and really get critical focus. That's about all I got for you though. I would imagine that that would help you do it and that would get you there. Um, focus peaking and zooming in on the focus would be the way to do that. Alex McLellan, McClellan says, McClellan, sorry. Alex McClellan says, how long can I record with the GH5 onto a Ninja Inferno at UHD 60p 8-bit on a 480 gig SSD? Um, okay, I can... I might be able to tell you. Wait, is there a card? There's no card on there. Um, okay, when Ryan comes back, <laughs> he's going to be running around a lot today. I'll have him grab the Inferno. I do have a 480 gig card. I can reformat it. Oh, is this my 480? That's a 960. Okay, thank you. Next step, uh, Ryan. Uh, Ninja Inferno. It is in the backpack. Open it up. It's in the big case in there. I got a 960 right here, so we'll just do half of that. Okay, let's go back to the GX8. This is the mini HDMI. Uh, okay, well, I'm not gonna be able to plug this into the screen, but I will just have to tell you. So if I go to, let's see, I'm in the video. I gotta have, I, have, I must have one of those kills right here somewhere. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And hold on, hold on, there might be one more thing. A um, bunch of HDMI cables there. Just grab, just drag the whole box over here. I need one of those cables. Thank you. This'll do it, perfect. All right, here we go. All right, let's just go back to this camera for a moment. Main camera, you. Hello, there we go. All right, so GX8 and then Inferno. This is fun. I like these shows. I like the Ask Me Anything shows. Ryan has to run around like a chicken with his head cut off, but I get to have fun. So, <laughs> sorry, Ryan. Um, all right, let's plug this guy into here. So what I'm doing right now is I am plugging in my the GX8, which has a micro USB or mini USB, whatever the hell, uh, HDMI, micro, mini, whatever the hell it's called, this little one. It is plugged into my decimator, which allows me to uh, convert anything, pretty much, to 1080p24, which is what the system needs. And as soon as this syncs up to the screen, I will do, um, I was messing with my presets the other day. Is this the right one? Yes, that is the right one, okay. I have to do something about this space. I'm working on that. All right, so we are looking at stabilization. I haven't looked at this camera in a long time, but let's see. Let's go up to the top of here and see. Clock, no, it's probably not gonna be in there. Let's just go, well, okay, if we go under photo, there's a stabilizer under photo, operation mode. Okay, so this is photography mode. And so you're saying there's no stabilizer in here. Exposure, continuous metering, highlight shadows, ISO luminance. Okay, all right, well, apparently, Let's make sure, let me put this into actual active movie mode. Let's try that again. Just to make sure, photo filter, snap, record, record quality, exposure, continuous autofocus, metering mode, highlight shadow, dynamic, diffraction, luminance, okay, digital zoom, silent mic level display. Okay, interesting. Okay, so I guess it doesn't. I don't think I knew that. Now, this camera, 
if I recall correctly, and I'm sorry, I just, I'm not, I, I was pretty up on the specs on this camera a while ago, but I'm not anymore. Um, I'm pretty sure this one does dual image stabilization. So if you have a lens that has stabilizers, then, and the body it combines together, let's see here, let's take, you do. So let me bring this back up. Um, nope, rock, whoa, that was weird. That's definitely wrong. There's the one. Okay, this, okay. Look. Yeah, saying bad, well, that sucks. Apparently we have lost here. Okay, just, okay. Um, sorry guys, there's, oh, if anybody can even see any of this, we're, we'll wait until the stream comes back to quality. Apparently we have lost, uh, we have lost image for a little bit. Everybody's saying dead, dead, dead. Ryan, tell everybody to stand by, we're working on it. In the chat. In the meantime, I'm going to get this set up. Let me know when I appear to be live again. Um, da, 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 da. And let's get this all set up. So I am plugging, if just in case anybody can actually hear me, I'm connecting my GH5 to the Inferno. And I'm going to try and set this up so that you can actually see the Inferno. Good. Yeah, we don't know what happened. Um, that's apparently Google is still saying no data or YouTube is saying it's up to bad. Okay, Ryan did a reset on his end. So who knows what's, oh, people gone again. Hmm, dead again. Well, this kind of sucks. I wonder what's going on. My backup is not going, his backup's not going. We're not uploading anything. Okay, we're back to good. We got good status now. So let us hope that the good status actually stays. All right, so just because I don't know where we started getting cut off there, uh, to recap, what we're doing right now is to answer a viewer's question, we are finding out how much footage he can capture with a 480 gig SSD on the Ninja Inferno while shooting 4K 60p and what, 4K 60p, was it 8-bit, 10-bit? Let me find the question again. Um, do, 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 do. Wow, there's a lot of questions here to get to. We're gonna have, okay, here we go. How long can I record a GH5? Ninja Inferno, okay, UHD 60p 8-bit. Okay, got it. Okay, so we are, um, let's go to close-up camera. So I've got my Inferno here. It is plugged into yonder GH5. Let me, I'll, oh, the menu is showing up there so you can kind of sort of see what's happening. We're going to make sure this is in video mode. It is, we are going to set this to, uh, oops, wrong one. We're going to set this to 4K 8-bit 60p he wants. 4K 8-bit 60p, there we go. Okay, we're setting that. And then we're gonna go to our HDMI out and make sure that it is outputting, so not down converting. Let's set that to auto and that'll bring it back up to 4K 60. And is that showing? This says 4K 60p, excellent. And 8-bit mode, we are in 8-bit mode, we're not in 10-bit for the output. Okay, so this is the mode that he wants. So now, uh, let me just see if there's anything on this card. I'm pretty sure there isn't. I don't, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is reformat the card for you, and I'll tell you exactly. I just gotta make sure there's nothing on here. Um, yeah, this is fine, okay. So let me just reformat this, and tap, and, oh, that's the wrong button. Oh, I have to get out of play mode. Back in the record mode. I wish you could see this screen better. There's, unlike the GH5, which outputs its menu system, this doesn't do that. So um, I can't do that. So let me just go in, format media, I am sure. You now keep in mind, well here, I'll just, I'll just read you the numbers that we've got on here. So this will, um, get the right setup, that's the wrong button. Oh, here we go, okay. I don't know how, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and show you what the screen actually says here. Okay, yeah, you, can, you should be able to see that. All right, so we're recording to ProRes 422 on a 960 gig card. So this is twice the size you were asking, but you see it says there it's an hour 42 minutes. Let me see, can I zoom in closer? I can get a little bit closer. Okay, then let's go over here, look at the chart at the bottom. If you switch it to high quality, you'll get an hour six minutes. At 422, you get an hour 42. At LT, light mode, you get two hours 27. Roughly the same times for Avid DNX HR, so you can see all the numbers there. But remember, this is a 960 gig 
a SSD, so cut those numbers in half, and there is 4K 60p 8-bit recording times. Okay, hopefully that is helpful for you. I love this thing, so awesome. And shut off, okay. So there's that, excellent, what's next? Hmm, let's go back to the split screen and, <clears throat> pardon me. All right, Adrian says, I'm getting a random issue on the GH5. I lose autofocus options in creative video mode. Manual focus appears on screen and I have to reset camera settings to get it back. <clears throat> Autofocus options. When you say, what do you mean by autofocus options? Do you mean that you can no longer switch between 225 area and single point and face detection? Is that what you mean? Um, keep in mind that there is a manual focus button on the lens, which will override the settings in the camera. Um, is that right? Am I right? Do I have that backwards? Let me double check that. Creative movie mode, autofocus on there. Autofocus here, switch that into manual. Oops, and yeah, the manual, right, the manual focus switch on the camera will override the settings on the back of the camera. A manual focus switch on the lens will override the settings on the back of the camera. So make sure that's not the problem. But other than that, no, I have never seen it. If you're saying, you say you have to reset, <clears throat> you have to reset camera settings, you're talking about restore to factory settings, or are you talking like just kind of turn autofocus off and back on? Um, so we'll see if you add anything to this, but Lens is number one, make sure that's not happening. And number two, uh, if you haven't done a full factory reset, then do that. If you're still having that issue, then it sounds like it called into Panasonic. That's very, very odd. Let me see if you've added anything else to this. Scrolling down, Adrian says, yes, I lose those options. I haven't changed it to manual. Okay, have you done a full factory reset? That's the next big question. Because um, you say reset, I don't know quite what you mean. <laughs> Kevin says, at Google scale, there's always something broken somewhere. Yeah, wouldn't that the truth? Okay, waiting for Adrian to respond on that. And in the meantime, we scroll up and see if there's another question that we can start addressing. Um, Sonic, okay, Sonic's saying you have upgraded to version two. Okay, so then Sonic, I will do, Ryan, write this down somewhere, big. Uh, I will do the dimming, not test, because I know that it doesn't dim on mine, so I will go through my settings, show that it doesn't dim, and figure out exactly what my settings are, and share that with you. And I'll probably end up doing a whole video on it. Okay, uh, let's see, did we get anything else from Adrian? Adrian, I'm still waiting for you to tell me if you've done a full reset on the camera, please let me know. And uh, Beardy Face, this drone called Jaws. Yes, the drone called Jaws, the one that tried to eat my fingers. Dang drone. Yash Pai says, I'm going to a Tiger Reserve next week. Awesome, and I have an 18 to 200 lens. Is there some advice that you'd like to give me? Yes, don't get eaten. Um, <laughs> okay. What else to tell you? The only times I've shot animals like that was in a zoo, and there was actually that's not true. I was in Kenya in 2005. Wow, that's a long time ago. And we it was it was a preserve. It, it was a wildlife preserve. We weren't totally out in the wild, so the animals were used to trucks driving around. There were no fences between us. Um, do everything your guide tells you to do. Don't turn your back on a on a wild animal, and. Uh, don't get eaten. That's basically that's my advice for you. Sorry. I don't have much else for that. Uh, <clears throat> Brent, it's Wednesday night after 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, must be talking about the DJI announcement. Bart says, I have the DJI Phantom 4 at the bottom of a lake. Oh, no. My wife wouldn't let me buy a remote control submarine to go find it. <laughs> we don't have any friends who are scuba divers. You can send one of them down. Oh, that's brutal. Ajita uh, says, just wonder if you know when the new firmware of G85 will come out. I know nothing about firmware for G85. Sorry. Uh, don't know if there's anything coming or no idea. And just simply, Brandon says, can you imagine a DJI drone that can accept a Panasonic, GJ, uh, Panasonic GH5 with most lenses to shoot video? That would be awesome. Well, that would be, but I don't know how necessary that would be because the higher end DJI drones all are micro four thirds mounts and they even have larger than 4K sensors in them. So you get like five and a half K, four and a half or five K or something on a tiny little camera that is designed, obviously it's totally balanced for the drone. And then you've got, um, you got a variety of lenses that you can put on there. Pretty epic. I mean, seriously. Look, the Inspire, whew, man, that is a sweet ride. That is a pretty awesome drone. But there are drones that can carry full-size cameras, absolutely. I don't actually know if DJI makes them, but there are some out there, for sure. Alrighty, uh, Daddy MCC says, are there any drawbacks to shooting video with the GH5 in the 6K photo mode versus the normal mode? Okay, that's a good question. So 6K photo mode, is 
technically video, the differences between 6K photo and uh, regular video mode is 6K photo is shot in four by three aspect ratio, and 6K photo by default opts for a higher shutter speed because the whole point of 6K photo mode is to extract a still frame. That doesn't mean that you can't shoot video with it though. Now, one other thing to be aware of, the only, only one of the three modes will record sound. I believe it's the start stop mode, meaning you push the button to start recording and push it again to stop, basically the same way that you shoot video, and that that is the only mode that will record sound. Um, you are gonna be in a four three aspect ratio. Now, if you get into shooting with anamorphic lenses, this is kind of what you're doing. You're shooting in a four three aspect ratio with an anamorphic lens that then de-squeezes, stretches things out, and you, that's where you get this whole 6K anamorphic. And I saw a YouTube video where they did 8K anamorphic off of the GH5, and I haven't, I need to go back to it, because I watched it went, but that's the same thing we did to get 6K, so I'm not really sure. Anyway, uh, and the 6K anamorphic, I think, to, I think we're just calling it High res anamorphic, not really calling it 6K because it's different than true 6K, but it's still 6K worth of data. It's epic. I mean, you can shoot essentially 6K anamorphic on this tiny little camera. Kind of awesome. Mm, but there's the drawbacks, if you will. Those are the differences. And so whether it's a drawback or not is obviously um, for you to decide. Marvin says, have the camera set up on top of a platform so, have the camera set up on top of a, so difficult to see the display, so it's hoping for remote monitor. Oh, okay, sorry. We're back to the star focusing issue. The camera set up on top of a platform, so difficult to see the display, so it's hoping for a remote monitor slash tethering solution. Aha, wireless would be good, since it's usually fucking cold, I understand. Um, well, oh boy. I mean, you do have, of course, built-in wireless capability. You can put and pump the image over to your iPad or iPhone or Android device or whatever but it's not super high resolution, so critical focus might be hard to tell. If focus peaking works, then you've got that. Um, otherwise, okay, here's what I would do. Here's how you do it. You get a nice big monitor, whatever biggest HDMI monitor you can, and then you set up the camera with the HDMI out in a nice long cord coming into your lovely little warm spot where you have your coffee, your cocoa, or your hot rum, and you are controlling the camera. You've got this big ass screen in front of you so you can see the image nice and big. Now, you use your iOS device, or whatever, your wireless device, put it into manual focus, and now you can control the focus on the device, but look at the image on the really big screen. How's that for a solution? It's the best I got for you. Okay. Dave Dell Studio says, good morning, if shooting 4K, would you stick to VFR 4K 8-bit 60p and slow further in post if you need? I find full HD 180 FPS a little noisy sitting alongside 4K. Okay, great question, great topic. So, um, allow me to refresh before we continue. First of all, 1080 versus 4K. Apparently, and I haven't done my own test to verify this, apparently there is a slight quality degradation when going into VFR mode. However, the vast majority of complaints that I've seen about this have to do with the amount of light. So first, before we get into answering your question, just as something really, really important factor to understand about shooting VFR. When you're shooting variable frame rate, let's say you're taking this up to, let's make this, let's make this uh, easy math. Let's say, okay, uh, 60, 30, 60, let's say 120. Let's, let's say you're gonna shoot 120 frames per second. Okay. When you're in normal video mode, you're shooting 30 frames per second, the fastest shutter speed you can, sorry, the slowest, slowest shutter speed you can possibly have is a 30th of a second, right? Makes sense. If you're shooting 30 frames per second, you can't have a exposure, a single frame that is longer, open longer than 30 frames per second. Assuming that you want to record one frame of video per frame of exposure. If you do go to longer, if you opened up say a quarter of a second, you go into manual mode, shoot video, set it to a quarter of a second, what you'll end up with is Essentially, even though the video is written at 30 frames per second, you'll end up with a video that is at maximum at a quarter of a frame per second, uh, at a quarter sh second shutter speed, you'll have a four frame per second video. You would get long blurry shots four frames per second, right? Makes sense? Okay, so the longest shutter speed you can have, slowest shutter speed, open for the longest, gathering the most light, at 30 frames per second is 1 30th of a second. You take it up to 60 frames per second, it's 60th of a second. You take it up to 120 frames per second, it's 120th of a second. Now, usually, we actually want to record video at half of that. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you're 30p, you generally want the shutter to be open for half of the duration, so a 60th of a second. That means if you're shooting at 120 frames per second, you probably want a shutter speed of 240th of a second. 
Keep in mind, this is made a lot easier. The math is easier when you switch the camera into shutter angle because you just set it to 180 degrees, and 180 degrees is half of a spherical six, 360, and then you always have the right exposure. Um, incidentally, if you don't know what that means, just Google 180 degree shutter, and you'll find all kinds of info on it. Anyway, so to shoot 120 frames per second, that is a 240th of a second shutter speed. To shoot 180th, 180 frames per second, that is a 360th of a second shutter speed. Now, what's the difference between shooting 360th of a second and shooting 30th of a second? <laughs> you need a lot more light, right? You gotta have a lot more light. So what I think happens for a lot of people is they are in a controlled environment, right? Or a environment, outdoors, whatever. You're in an environment and you're shooting at 30p or 60p. You're like, yeah, this looks good. And they go, let's crank it to 180. And the image gets dark and crunchy because to shoot at a shutter speed that is high enough, the ISO is gonna go way up. And if you're in a low light situation to begin with, you're gonna max out your ISO. So this is why most VFR video doesn't look good, as good as it would if it weren't VFR. You need a lot of light. That's just fact, right? You just need a lot of light. So there's that. Now, to answer the actual question, which was, I don't remember what it was now, uh, if shooting 4K, would you stick to VFR 4K 8-bit 60p and slow down further in post if you need to? Okay, so I shoot 4K 60p non-VFR pretty much exclusively on this phone, unless I have a really good reason to go somewhere else on this phone. Did I say on this phone? On this camera, unless I have a real reason to go to another frame rate uh, or, or frame size. Even though I will deliver, most likely deliver at 30p, that is because I can slow down any shot to 2x, half speed, without adding any frames, right? The, the software, the video editor does not have to add any frames for that. I've got 60 frames per second. Normally I'm only gonna use 30 of them. I'm gonna use every other frame. But if I want to slow it down, I can use every frame and get 60. This is not VFR mode though. This is just native 4K 60. The reason I wouldn't shoot it in VFR mode all the time is because when you're in VFR, you get no sound. Right, audio is not recorded when you're in VFR mode. So unless you are specifically getting a shot that you want to, uh, well, go higher than the 60, and of course if you're shooting 4K, you can't. So if you're shooting 1080, you wanna go up to 180, then you put it in VFR mode. Know that you're not gonna get your sound. And also when you do this, when you record in VFR mode, what you play back will actually play back in slow motion, playing back on the camera itself. So again, if you were, if you wanted to shoot 4K 60P, but deliver on a 30p timeline. You could set the camera to 4K 30 VFR mode and then crank it up to 60. You shoot something, you play it back, and on the back of the camera, you're gonna see it play back at slow speed, at half speed. If you take your 180 frame per second 1080p and you're shooting it in 30p mode, cranked up to 180, you shoot it, you play it back, and it plays back, what is it, 17% or something like that, um, real-time speed, so super slow down. You see that here. When you're shooting just in native 4K 60, knowing that you're gonna deliver in 30, possibly slow it down, when you play it back on the back of the camera, you're gonna see it in 4K 60. You're not gonna see that slow down effect. The only way to see that is to drop it onto a timeline and say, play back at half speed. And again, because there's 60 frames there, you're not gonna be adding anything. It also means that if you wanted to slow it down to say a quarter speed, you would only be adding every other frame, whereas if you shot in 30 frames and wanted to slow it down to a quarter speed, you'd have to be adding three out of every four frames, which would definitely look like crap. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. Bart says, congratulations on the 9.2K subscribers. We're getting there. I passed you by 500 subs. <laughs> the race is on. Hey, let's do it. Uh, yeah, going for 10K. That's gonna be a fun celebration. We have to pop a tasty beverage on air when that happens. All right, God, we're so far behind. Now where people are talking about... <laughs> That's mean. Brent made a hashtag blame Ryan for the stream going out. That's cruel. Poor Ryan, he works so hard. All right, um, uh, just, blah, 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 blah about the stream being off. Glad we are back on track. I think I lost, there it is. Um, Adrian, yes, I lose those options. I haven't changed it to manual. We, um, okay, we already hit that. Adrian, let me just scroll real quick and see if you talked about, uh, reset the camera settings completely, need to track what I'm doing, and guess when it happens again. Yes, so we're talking again about losing autofocus functions. Please do, the key to anything like this is reproducibility. And I know this can take time, believe me, I've done plenty of this stuff, and it's like, really, can't you guys just fix it? But for a company to really fix a bug, assuming that it is a bug, then you need to be able to do a reproducible, I do this, then this, then this, and this happens, and it needs to be at least relatively consistent. If it's not every time, at least some of the time, you're not changing anything else. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. And then uh, and then you can call Panasonic. Or maybe by doing that, you go, oh, okay, now I see what's happening. And you realize what's going on. So 
that's the key. Reproducibility is definitely the key there. So I'm sorry you're having that issue. Hopefully it is not an actual camera problem and it's just user error. I mean, I don't mean that to be insulting. I just, hopefully it is. You don't have to get rid of your camera and get it fixed. All right, oh, wait, I think there was questions before this. Um, no, no, we aren't, okay. Scrolling back down there, that was Adrian. And then Frank Lovett says, I'm so I'm confused about the best app to use to take RAW on my iPhone 7 Plus. Oh, okay, fun. Um, they all seem so clunky. What do you think? Uh, I like I like Lightroom Mobile. I really do. Lightroom Mobile's RAW camera is great because you have a lot of override on it, a lot of manual control on it. I don't shoot RAW that often on the iPhone. I mean, you know, it's great that you can, but let's face it, it's still not like you're shooting on this. But... Um, but yeah, Lightroom Mobile is the one that I use. I do have other apps installed. Pardon me, goodness, but I don't, I don't shoot RAW in any of them. I always shoot RAW in Lightroom Mobile. Snapseed, I believe, lets you shoot RAW as well. Um, let me just see if we go. Let me. Uh, oh, what did I disconnect? Right, I disconnected this. Let me swap these cables out. Um, let's just take a quick look and see what else. There's also the RAW by 500px, which I was really excited about, but then it kind of never really went anywhere right, and it didn't work that well in the first place, which was really unfortunate. That was a bummer, because I was really excited about that one, but alas, it didn't work. Okay. Sorry for the clunky, clunky sounds. Uh, this, by the way, if you haven't seen this photo, here we go, is, uh, is off of an iPhone 8 Plus, a buddy of mine had, uh, that new portrait mode. This is, sh this is at night, so it was already dark in the background, but the background was definitely lit up and uh, doing that black and white monochrome spotlight. Oh, it's so cool. I mean, I cannot wait to get my hands on this thing and start d demoing it for you guys. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to, I wanted to oh, uh, open, open, uh, camera. I think I can shoot, can I shoot raw on Snapseed? Hello, camera. Oh, like, I, see, look at that. I never shoot with this camera. Okay, maybe not. So this doesn't say anything about raw. If I take a picture, use that photo, does it say this is raw? Um, I don't know. I don't actually know. I, oh, I hear info. Info, oh, it doesn't say. Well, that's lame. Hmm. Look, you can see where I work. Look, it is a very exciting warehouse. Um, okay, so that one, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Certainly Lightroom does, so we go into Lightroom and open up the camera, which incidentally, by the way, the easiest way to do this is to push, if you've got a force touch phone, just force touch on Lightroom Mobile and it fires up and then you can just quickly switch to the camera. Definitely a better way to do that. And then here, we're in pro mode. You can see up at the top it says DNG. So that is, it's not gonna switch that over to JPEG, but obviously I'll leave that in DNG. And there you go. So now you're shooting raw there. And what else? Um, let's see here. I, I do still think I have raw by 500. Yep, yeah, here's raw by 500px. Let's fire this one up. Let's see, again, I haven't used it since I rebuilt the phone. Uh, now I just take a picture and apparently it's raw. I'm really not a fan of this interface. Um, can I export the original? Jeez, no, I don't want to upload that. Export original to camera roll. Failed to export. I have no idea. Well, that was an exciting demo. Anyway, use Lightroom. Honestly, Lightroom Mobile. If you're not a Lightroom subscriber, and that's why you're not using Lightroom Mobile, then I don't have a solid answer for you. Um, I mean, 500 you check it out. See if that works for you. But... Lightroom Mobile is definitely the way to go. I think you can use Lightroom Mobile. Oh, but you can't shoot raw unless you're a paid subscriber. Pretty sure that's right. Anyway. Um, that's maybe not the most useful info for you, but hopefully it helps. Sonic Palette says, are there any free LUTs that you would recommend? Have you used the small HD focus? I have not used the small HD focus. That is, if I re remember what you're talking about, right, the external monitor that's supposed to be really, really good. I know that uh, 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 Max did that. Max uh, Yuryev did a video on that. He loved it. Uh, but I have not, but free LUTs. I, you know, when I did my GH5 training, I did a bunch of looking into LUTs and I downloaded a few and there were some good ones for sure. Uh, I don't recall offhand what they are, but if you are, if you use this course, if you have this course, I do mention them in the course. So also if you go to gh5training.com, there is a link on the page to kind of the support page for the course. I might have linked to them there. So. The, go to gh5training.com and look at that. And of course, if you don't have the GH5 training yet, then by all means, please do acquire that. It will be very useful for you. Kevin Wright, what's the best route for sending feedback to Panasonic and requesting future firmware updates? I, 
upgrade that 500 px thing is done. Um, I think I actually have an email address because I asked them once, and let's see if I actually was smart enough to put that into my address book. I asked Panasonic once, where should I send people? This, I think, is it. Yes, this is it. Ha! Lumix Marketing. Okay, write this down. Ready? Lumix, L U M I X, Marketing. You can spell that. Lumix Marketing at us.panasonic.com. Got to put the US in there. Lumix Marketing at us.panasonic.com. That is the email address to send any request for features or feedback, whatever. Absolutely 100% not promising they're going to get back to you because that email address probably gets a ton of mail. So don't expect a response, but know that it is a valid email box and that's where it will go. So, oh wait, is that the right one? That might be the wrong one. Well, send it there anyway. Um, it'll get forwarded on. Uh, let's see here. Brent, Brent Kaplan says the DJI Matrice. I don't know, Matrice 600, I don't, never heard of that. Can carry most cameras the size of a red or lower weight. Good Lord. Man, sending your red flying through the air, that's pretty awesome. Okay, Adrian, we covered that. Marvin is going to try that, thank you. Bart Johnson says, I heard it explained that 6K anamorphic is measured 6K on megapixels. Correct, since you're shooting 4.3. Correct. When you de-squeeze the pixel, the actual horizontal, horizontal resolution is giant. Correct, again. It's phenomenal. It really is. On this tiny little camera. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Kevin, you are really into this um, HDMI tethering thing. Look, the HDMI output, not the HDMI output, sorry, the, the wireless tether view or the wired tether view is not meant for video. Okay, well, I can't say this enough times. It is not meant for video use. It is not full resolution. It is a low resolution preview that is there so that you can check Quick focus, you've got focus peaking, it's enough for critical focus, but our friend Marvin is doing something very, very specific, shooting stars, it is like a pixel in the sky that he needs to check focus on. And if the display you see on here isn't enough, then hook up an external monitor. This is obviously not something that is needed for general purpose use. I understand that you really, really don't like the resolution output that you're getting off of this camera, but I have now already done working shoots with this camera tethered and it works great. So I'm sorry that you're not getting full 4K 60p out of it like you would like, but that's the way that it is. Maybe one day it'll get upgraded, but that's how it is today. Okay. Uh, Just Simply Brandon, I don't think I've seen you talk about 4K 360 degree video cameras. I have not ever talked about that. Do you plan on reviewing one like the 360 Fly? <sighs> you know, it's just one of those things I don't have that much interest in. Um, I, I get there's definitely some cool use cases for it, but I don't know. I maybe maybe it's something like drones that I just I wasn't that into until I got one. Um, maybe if I had a 360, I'd suddenly go, "Oh my god, this is the coolest thing ever." I just don't really see that many use cases for it other than going, "Wow, look, it's in 360." Okay, now what? I think of shooting video as something that is it's it's like a short film or a documentary or whatever, a movie, a thing that people are watching. They're looking at this, right? And as the director, I want my audience to look here. I don't want the action to be happening here. The audience is like, la, 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 looking over here. And then I have to put an arrow on screen that says, turn this way, that's where the action is. For things like education, oh, it's so cool. I think it's phenomenal for education, right? Walk around and explore dinosaur land or something. You know, it's, it's like a, almost VR, but not really, but it's 360. I think education, it's a phenomenal tool. But for basic everyday vloggy, um, just, I don't know, shooting movies or anything like that, I just, I, I'm not into it. I just don't see it. Waiting to be proven wrong, but that is my personal take on it. So I'm not in any hurry to go check them out, honestly. Sorry. Um, all right. Adrian's going to keep me posted. Wonderful setter says, are you shooting video with your f.95 lens? Oh, yeah. What kind of subjects can you share your experience focusing um, specifically? Sure. Um, <clears throat> he's talking about my Zhongyi 25mm f0.95 lens. The only video that you've probably seen from that that would actually look like it was shot on that lens was a year ago when I was at Adobe Max in San Diego. I didn't go to Adobe Max this year, which, or I'm not going, it's either way, but I'm not going this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there is a scene in there, a few scenes in there, where we're at this after party, the big Max party, which is outdoors at night. And I shot a bunch of video on that, and it looks so good. It's, that video I'm pretty sure shot 4K. It was on a GH4, because of course the GH5 wasn't out yet. And 
it's super shallow depth of field, but it looks so good. All the video of the party scene, so I'm gonna link to that video up here, because that's a while ago, you probably won't be able to find it easily. And um, if you just photo Joseph in Adobe Max, you'll find it. Anyway, um, I, there's a, a selfie scene, Somebody's vacuuming, lovely. There's a selfie scene where I'm shooting this and it's you know, really, really shallow depth of field, uh, but shooting in the concert, walking around shooting the crowd in the concert, there's some really cool backlit shots. There's a guy vaping and this really cool backlit through there, people dancing. You know, obviously I lose focus sometimes because it's so shallow, but I love the way that video looks. So check that out. <coughs> Pardon me. It is, it is very, very cool. Stop vacuuming already. Okay, so there's that. Mm, have I updated the High Sierra? I have not. Um, two reasons I have not yet upgraded. One, I just haven't had the time to deal with it. We've been very busy. But also number two, I want to ensure, and it might already be out uh, for all I know, but I want to make sure that uh, Final Cut is updated for it <clears throat> because I understand that there's gonna be a Final Cut update for that, uh, as I think there is. And I will, because of the file system changes, there's a potential for a lot of apps to not work, so I need to find one of those websites, and I know there, there's a few out there, that list basically every app under the sun and tells you if it's compatible or not. Uh, I rely on my iMac on a daily basis, and losing that to a High Sierra upgrade that gone wrong would not be good, so no, I have not yet upgraded. I'm looking forward to it because of the file system thing, especially since apparently you gain a lot of disk space back, which I desperately need, uh, but uh, yeah. Incidentally, I was looking at so Seagate, somebody just started shipping 12 terabyte single disks. Insane. Insane. Okay. Um, Kevin Wright, to be fair, I also don't like the frame rate. <laughs> Kevin does not like, for the record, Kevin Wright does not like the tethering solution on the Lumix camera. I, on the other hand, am quite pleased with it. The resolution could be higher, but it works, it does the job, and it's fast. And that is what matters. Brent says, yes, wait on High Sierra. It breaks several apps right now yeah i like i said i've gotta i've gotta check it i'm yeah it's a, and it's because of the file system upgrade that's why there's so many things that um, that potentially can break so it's a significant upgrade i don't think there's that many new features uh that i'm interested in i don't, honestly don't even know i gotta look oh photos oh that's it that's the reason i do need to do it because there's there's some cool stuff in photos that i need to show uh, well it'll come soon <clears throat> And Brent's good for me. Yes, it was Seagate that released a 12 terabyte drive. Ridiculous. Okay, we are getting vacuumed out of here because that noise is annoying as heck, and I'm sure you guys can hear it too. And besides, we have been on for an hour. Look at that. Nailing it on an hour. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, let's see here. I want to, before you go, do not forget, we've got a few things going on this week. We've got the Polar uh, Live Training called Local Adjustments. This is tomorrow the 10th. The date's on there. Yep, this is tomorrow the 10th. I don't remember what time, but look at the website. Go to photoapps.expert slash live to check that out. So definitely uh, do tune in for that. And again, if you haven't seen it yet, I did release a video over the weekend, an edited video of my wireless lav range test, which is obviously not an all-encompassing every lav mic under the sun, but it is three very, very different microphones that I tested because I could and I thought it would be fun. And so that's what we did. And we'll leave it at that. Or you know what to do, guys. Hit that like button on the video if you liked it. Hit the, uh, if you really didn't, you know, do tell me why. I always like to hear constructive criticism. Nasty comments just go away. Uh, but tell me what you think and subscribe and hit that little notification bell and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. Thanks a bunch, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Apparently the mouse is freaking out. One of these days we're gonna like whoosh into, I still have mouse issues.